Hi everyone, my name is Joe Henderson. If we haven't met yet, I play disc golf in Canada and I'd love for you to stick around to see some of the courses that we travel to, but also so that you can learn a little bit more about me. So that's what this video is for. I'm going to be doing an ask me anything. So I've already asked some questions over on Instagram and threads and other platforms. And so now I'm going to be answering them. So stay tuned to hear all of those answers. All right, so I have all of these questions here on my phone and I'm gonna just go through that and that's why I'm looking down at my phone. So the first question comes in and it is asking, will there be a putting video? I keep clanking 18 foot putts and it's demoralizing with two laughing emojis. So I'm glad you're still in good spirits about your putting woes, but yes, there will be a putting video at some point in time. I'd love to know what would you find the most helpful in that? Is it like drills or the actual mechanics of putting? Let me know what you think would be the easiest or like the most valuable information that I could put into a video. And then, yeah, we can definitely do that. Right now though, currently it is minus 40 degrees Celsius in Calgary. So we are unable to do a putting video at this moment, but for sure in this year, we can definitely make that happen. Uh, the next question is asking if Cam and I ever play board games together. And this one is an easy answer. It is definitely yes. And we also love the game Crib. That would probably be our most played game, I would say, that one. And then we also play the game Pandemic. I don't know if that's too soon to mention that game, but yeah, we play that game as well. And then we also play uh, a game called Racco. It's like a little card slash board game. The next question comes in and they are asking, is there discs that are that would throw better in the cold. So an easy answer for me would say, I don't really think there's a huge difference to that, but I would say that the more flexible plastic, like I have an ESP Flex Buzz, that does feel better in the winter or in the cold. And another tip for you, if you're thinking about throwing discs in the cold, I would just put your bag outside just for a little bit, like at least a little bit of time so that the discs can get adjusted to that temperature and then that way the snow won't stick to your discs as much if it lands in the snow as well. So it's just a little helpful tip and then your discs won't be so warm, you know, the melting of the snow, all of that. So that helps me for sure. Recommended disc golf courses to play in YYC? This is the next question. I would have to say Lloyd Park is a must. If you wanna know anything about that, I'll have a video up here. Baker Park is the most popular course it's a classic, you, you can't miss it, it's wonderful. It just gets super, super busy in the summertime. Forest Lawn is a really great park. It does need some cleaning up. It's in a little bit of a more like crime area. So like a little bit, maybe some people would call it like a dirtier park or anything like that, but it's just a more transient park. I love it, I think it's a wonderful park. It just needs some cleaning up to do. And then uh, another park would be, Park 96 actually is really, really amazing, but you need a membership to go play there. So that's the only downside to that one, but that course is so fun. There's so much elevation and yeah, it's really, really awesome. So as long as you know a member, they're able to take you in and play, but yeah, that's another one that I would recommend for sure. So the next question is, with so many different styles of form, how does one work on perfecting their own version? And to that, I would just say, do whatever you're feeling comfortable with. But if you have anything in your form that stands out that is very, very different compared to like the form of a pro, I would say look back and look at their videos first and then do a slow motion recap of what your form looks like and film yourself throwing. And then if you have anything that's like outrageously different, like maybe you, I don't know, maybe you have a little hop. This is something that I did before, um, but I had a little hop in my form on my X step. And that's something that I was like, no other pro is going up on the tee pad. They're all going forward in that forward momentum. So that was something that I wanted to tweak in my own form to emulate more of what the pros do. But I would just say, do the things that you feel comfortable in and emulate it after the pros, but you can still kind of have your own version as well. Do whatever feels comfortable for you. So the next question is, pineapple on pizza, no or absolutely no? And for me, this is an absolute yes. I love pineapple on pizza. 
So it's funny that the only two options were no or no, <laughs> but for me, it's an absolute yes, hands down, I love pineapple on pizza. Here's another question that says, what are your favorite winter golf clothes and gear? So some of my favorite winter disc golf clothes, I have actually a video on that and I'll link it right up here, but a lot of the items that I include are either Lululemon, Arcteryx, or like I do have a pair of winter hiking boots that I use for disc golf and those are Solomon. I love those a lot and I have an Arcteryx Adam jacket that I've recently added to my collection this summer. Love that jacket. It has been my go-to colder weather jacket that I've been using and my Lululemon vest. Those two layers, whew, they will keep you toasty. They're really, really nice. And I have some hand warmers. I have these hand warmers, uh, they're called Okupa, I believe, but they're electric hand warmers that you can charge with your USB and they're magnetic. So you can stick them together and then separate them. They're little tiny hand warmers that they pack a huge punch. Super, super toasty. And you can just put them, slide them right into your mitts. And they're small enough that you can put them in there and you can carry on as normal. Even if you have just a slightly bigger mitt, then it's perfect. But yeah, those are probably my favorite items. If I have any more, I'll link them in the description. Okay, so this next person asked, are you looking forward to the minus 40 weather on the way next week? Well, it's here. The minus 40 weather is here and I am not looking forward to it. I have not played disc golf in a week and it's all I can think about. So not looking forward to it and I'm not enjoying it. But you know what? That's what happens when you live in Calgary, Alberta. You just have to endure it for like a couple weeks and then move on and life will be the same and we'll be able to disc golf again. This next question is asking, what's the furthest that I've ever traveled for for a tournament? And this question's actually going to change in about a month. So my answer will be very, very different. <laughs> but right now, I think the farthest that I've traveled is probably, is it Kamloops, BC? Probably. I think Kamloops, BC is the farthest that I've ever gone. I honestly have not played that many tournaments, you guys. Like, the ones that I have played, I put 110% my energy into. But overall, I don't think that I've played more than 20 tournaments. Like I have played not very many. But this year, I'm hoping to change that a little bit. I'm hoping to play quite a few more this year. And one of the tournaments that I'm going to is actually Memorial Disc Golf Championships. So that one is in Arizona, which is wildly different than Kamloops, BC. And it's much, much further away in a whole different state for that matter and yeah I'm really looking forward to it and I can't wait to get there. Oh the Chain Out podcast asked me when can we get you on the podcast and funny enough I just was on their podcast so you'll have to head over to their links all of the links will be down below and you can find that podcast there when it releases. Okay here's another question I have a question asking if I have any future plans to go on the pro tour. And I have two answers for this, I think. But I would say if things led to that and if I felt a desire to do so, then yes, of course I would. But at the moment, I don't really feel that desire or that pull. I just prefer to play the tournaments that I wanna play and then focus on the YouTube, focus on the social media side of things and my other jobs as well. So right now, probably not. But if I ever do feel that pull, I would do it in a heartbeat. And I would also say that age for me has a factor into that as well. I'm not as young as I used to be. If I was around like 18, 20, then yes, 100%, I would go full tilt into the pro tour scene. But right now I am in my 30s. So yeah, there's a fun fact and something else you can know about me. But yeah, I am not as young as I once was. What are the three reasons why the Oilers are better than the Flames? And if you didn't know what the Oilers were, it's the Edmonton Oilers in the NHL and the Flames are the Calgary Flames in uh, the NHL as well. So <laughs> there's a huge rivalry between Oilers and Flames fans. It's like the Battle of Alberta. I will say I'm more of an Edmonton Oilers fan than I am a Calgary Flames flame fan, but now I live in Calgary, used to live in Edmonton, but I'm just going to say the three reasons are actually Leon Dreisaitl. I once saw him in Bar Brico in Edmonton, Alberta, and he was eating a plate full of prosciutto, 
and he got a hat trick that night. So I would say it's because of all the platefuls of prosciutto that Leon Dreisaitl <laughs> eats. And that's my answer. I'm sticking to it. Are you coming to the Canadian Nationals in Clearwater, BC this summer? And the answer to that is I'm going to try my very hardest to get there. That is for sure a tournament that I don't want to pass up. So my fingers are crossed that I can make it there. And if it works out with our schedule, then yes, we will be there. Three people in the world that I would love to play around with. Hmm, that is a very good question. I wanna say, I wanna play it with my, my grandpa. I have not met him, but my dad's dad, he was a hiker and I would love to play around with him. He built a bunch of trails in BC actually, and he was a mountaineer. So I would love to play it around with him. You didn't say if they had to be alive or not. So I'm going to choose him. And then who else would I wanna play around with? Honestly, I feel like I have all the people in the world that I'd like to play with right now, but hmm. maybe Paige and Missy because they're really fun. They have amazing competitive banter and they're hilarious and yeah, they're just really fun to be around. So I think them too. Next up, Halo Sidewinder or G Star Sidewinder. I will say if I had to pick between the two of those, I would probably say G Star. But if I'm being completely honest, I would just say a regular Star Sidewinder is my go-to preferred plastic by Innova. Sidewinder or anything otherwise. Like my Roadrunners are all star plastic as well. The next question is, how many molds or manufacturers do I beg? I beg five different manufacturers. I beg uh, Latitude 64, Discraft, Innova, Prodigy, and Dynamic Discs. And those are all the discs that I beg. If I didn't do approachable with Paige Pierce, which other FPO would I like to do it with? Whew, you're putting me on the spot with this one, but I have like three people that I would wanna choose. I think I would choose either Holland, Ella, or Missy in no particular order, but those three people I'm actually friends with on tour and they are hilarious and fun and I know it'd be really great to banter with them. If I had to live somewhere other than Calgary, where would I live? That is a very good question. If the US residency or Canadian residency wasn't a thing, I probably would actually want to live in California. It's just so amazing and warm and you can play disc golf all year round. It'd be wonderful. And yeah, I think I would choose California. They have mountains, ocean, forests. They have it all. So yeah, I think California. The next question is, what's your current favorite mid-range disc? For this one, easy answer, buzz. Easy. And they asked one more question. It says, what is your go-to color when selecting discs? So for me, it's more, not about the color or what the disc looks like. It's about if it's in the correct weight or it's the exact disc that I want. So color isn't a huge thing for me. I do want it to be easy to find in say the grass or the leaves or whatever else it might be. So like in the winter, I won't cho choose white discs. I usually prefer like a pink or a blue or something like that. But yeah, mostly though, I'm thinking about like, is it gonna be the right disc for my bag, for my arm speed and all of that. What is my favorite course in Massachusetts? Well, I have not been to Massachusetts before, but I would probably say Maple Hill because that's one course I do wanna play there, so. The disc golf guy asks a really intriguing question and I would love to hear some of the conversation happening in the comments here as well. But would the best potential sponsors for women's disc golf coverage be companies that focus on women's disc golf? That is a very good question. I think the answer to that is like, you could be as interested in women's disc golf as you want to be, right? Like if those companies wanted to be interested or focused on women's disc golf, that would be an excellent way to showcase that. So yeah, that's a great question, Terry. I don't know the answer to it, but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. And I think that from a marketing standpoint, it makes sense for companies to invest into women's disc golf because it's showing that they care and that women's disc golf matters. So, so Terry asked another question, he said, What's the most inspiring or helpful thing when consuming women's coverage? Women's disc golf coverage. And then he said, wait, let's answer the question of who is watching women's disc golf coverage. 
women alone, men alone, women with men. And then he went on to say that his YouTube analytics only show about 5% of his viewers that are women. I think from my perspective, this is going to be very different because I primarily watch disc golf in our house. I am the one that turns it on. I am the one that will turn on DGN and pair it to my TV and all of those good things. So for me, it would be I watch women's disc golf coverage, but I would love to know that from your standpoint as well. Are you a female? Do you uh, represent as a female? And is that something that you're turning on or do you watch with your partner? How do you guys do that at home? Let me know. And yeah, for me, I can only answer it from my own point of view. So, but I would love to know if that is a different case for any of you at home. What is the most inspiring or helpful thing when consuming women's disc golf coverage? I wonder, like for me, it's seeing all the amazing shots that I see when women are playing and being like, oh my gosh, she's so creative. She can throw a backhand Annie, like so good, like, whoa. So for me, it's like the talent and like thinking, whoa, I could try that on the course or whoa, they are so much better than me and they are amazing at what they do because I know how difficult it is, right? So I would love to know. Answer those in the question because that brought up a lot of, a lot of good thoughts for me. So I would love to hear yours as well. Okay, so that wraps up all of the questions. And if you guys enjoyed this type of video just to get to know me in a different space or a different way, we can do this again. So let me know if that's something that you'd like to see. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next video and make sure to like, subscribe, comment, all of those good things because it does support our channel quite a bit. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.